Hi there, how are you all doing today? And welcome to the new year. Um, so today I'm gonna address a question that comes up for me from time to time. It's a great question. A couple of times people have asked me, how did I attract a husband, a man like Danny, who loves me so much when I speak about the person I used to be who didn't love herself? And for those of you who've read Dying to Be Me, you'll know that I speak about how I had cancer and how I was supposed to die. And I go into great detail about how I was suffering and how much my husband Danny took care of me. And, and he was amazing. I don't think I would be here today if it wasn't for him. Anyway, I speak about how I, I went through death and then I came out the other side and the cancer healed. And the biggest lesson I learned was that I had to love myself and I had lived a life of fear. And so I had attracted a lot of things in my life that were fear-based because all my decisions were made from a place of fear. And not just fear, but fear that came from a lack of self-love. So many of you rightfully have asked me, if you didn't love yourself, then how did you, how did you manage to find a man who loved you as much as Danny does? And that is a great question. So let me tell you a little bit about my own background and my story. So first of all, um, I am ethnically Indian and as part of my culture when I was growing up, particularly um, in the time when I was growing up, um, like during the late 70s, the 80s, during the 80s, there, was, um, there used to be a lot of gender disparity in my culture. And I did used to feel that I was a, um, I guess, a second class citizen, if you will, for want of a better word. And I had very low self-esteem, very low self-worth. And I did go through meeting a lot of guys who I allowed to treat me badly and to abuse me because I had very low self-worth. Um, and I would bend over backwards to accommodate them. I felt that it was, if, if the relationship didn't work out, I would take it personally. I felt it was my fault that I wasn't good enough. This is what happens when you don't love yourself, when you have no self-worth, no self-esteem, when you uh, are a people pleaser and you treat yourself like a doormat, or if you've been brought up in a culture that makes you believe that you are inadequate unless you have a man in your life and, and all these other things that messed up my mind as I was growing up. So I would bend myself out of shape like a pretzel to accommodate men. Um, and I would get scared if I, at the prospect of maybe someday not being attractive to men or not getting married. And, and so would really, really go out of my way to try and make myself likable or lovable. Now, um, I did attract a lot of people who I allowed to walk all over me, to abuse me, to treat me like a doormat. And as I said, this is what happens when you don't love yourself. But one day, um, you know, apart from, and, oh, and I've been through um, an arranged marriage where, uh, again, it didn't work out well at all. So believe me, I've had my fair share of bad relationships. What happened is at one, one time I was working for this wonderful boss. I was his executive assistant at a bank. Now this boss, um, he was married and he'd been married 10 years at that point that I started working for him. And one of the things I noticed was how wonderfully he treated his wife. So his wife of 10 years, he was still completely in love with her. He would send her flowers. Um, he would take her out to dinner. He treated her like a girlfriend, like a fresh new, like he was in a fresh new relationship. And it just blew me away because I had never seen a marriage like that in my life. Never. Certainly not in the culture I grew up in. This gentleman was not Indian. He was not from my culture, but I had not seen such a relationship in my paradigm, in my lifetime. I didn't know that there were men that treated women like that. I didn't even know that women were meant to be treated like that. That's how naive I was. Um, but when I saw how she was treated, 
it, it really made me see things in a new perspective. And I thought, wow, I wonder if I could ever find a man like that who really treats me that way. And I worked for this boss for about three years and I would see how um, even when he would tell me to hold all his calls, he would say the only person, the only call I want you to let through are calls for my wife if she calls. And, uh, and to me that was like really amazing and, and he was constantly ordering her flowers for different occasions or no reason at all and not even out of guilt. It was just because he loved her. So I started to think, wow, imagine if I held out for a relationship like this because for the first time it gave me a glimpse of the kind of relationship I would like to have. And this is one of the reasons I share with you stories about my relationship with my husband, Danny, is because I want you to have higher expectations. So anyway, it doesn't end there. So eventually I, I held out for somebody to treat me that way. I stopped allowing myself to get abused or to get into bad relationships where I would contort myself all out of shape because I had this role model to look up to. And so then I met Danny who treated me amazingly well, bought me flowers. He was just, he was just the nicest. I mean, he loved me and I loved him. But what really was so endearing to me was how wonderfully he treated me and how he respected me, which was something I wasn't used to, not from the men in my life. But here's the thing, because I had still not learned to love myself, I didn't feel worthy and deserving of his love. So I was constantly still working really hard to hold on to that, even though I didn't need to. I didn't know I didn't need to. I believed I had to work hard at being worthy enough to earn his love. So I would go out of my way to do things for him, things that were not even me. I wasn't even being myself, and that's my point here. He loved me for me. He didn't want me to be anyone else, but I kept trying really hard to prove to him that I was worthy. And so I would do things like, um, you know, like even if I was tired, I would never say no to him for anything. I would surprise him with presents, cook for him, things like that. But I wouldn't even allow my own self, my own desires, my own tiredness or anything to get in the way of the relationship. I started always putting my best foot forward, thinking that I needed to be this perfect person in order to earn his love. That's exhausting. And the thing is, it can be so exhausting that it can put a strain on the relationship. The other thing that happens when you don't love yourself, even when the man you're with loves you, the other thing that started to happen was that um, I kept needing him to assure me that I was worthy and deserving of his love. Like I would worry all the time that if I'm not good enough, will he leave me? He's such a wonderful person. And, and so it was almost like I constantly needed him to assure me. And it was like I had a hole within me that needed him to fill up. And so you become high maintenance when you're like that, when you don't love yourself. And in many cases, if a relationship is like that, it doesn't last. In my case, I got cancer. It's not that the relationship broke, but it's that I got sick, probably from being so drained of feeling so unworthy of being loved, but also because I was constantly doing things, not just for my husband, but for everybody. I believed I had to work really hard at being worthy and being loved. And when I got sick, my husband was by my side and took care of me. But it was only when I was in the other realm did I realize that I didn't have to work so hard at being myself. It's natural to be yourself. I didn't have to work so hard at trying to repay people who loved me. They loved me because of who I am. And if they loved me because of who I am, all I had to do was be myself. Hence the title of my book, Dying to Be Me. It took death for me to realize that all I had to do was be me and just relax into being me. And after I came out of the near-death experience, 
I knew that I was worthy and deserving of the love and all I had to give him was to be who I am and not try to be someone else to please him. And when I explained to him, this is what I'd learned, he was so happy because he said, I married you for who you are, not for you to try and be someone else. And in fact, he had felt it was a strain on the relationship when I was trying to be someone I'm not. This is why it's so important for you to be who you are. And I want to tell you that after my near-death experience, our relationship has got even stronger because we both are committed to being who we are and we're both committed to loving each other for who we are. We don't judge each other for who we are. We actually truly love each other for who you are. And when you allow yourself to be who you are, you attract that which loves you or those who love you for who you are. You don't have to be someone else. When I was growing up, I learned values like don't be so choosy and values like um, you have to compromise. I don't believe in those values. So I'm going to tell you if that's what you've learned, discard them. They're not true. Hold out for the one that's worthy of you. You are worthy. You are deserving. You need to know that. You have to learn to receive, receive love and know that it is your birthright. And and in order to learn to receive love, start asking yourself, do I block my love channels? Do I feel I have to be someone else uh, in order to be worthy of love? Stop feeling that way. Start allowing yourself just to be who you are and know that you are love. You are love inside. You came from love. You came from spirit and you go back there. How can you not be? How can you not be if that's where you came from? And and if you came from love, how can being yourself not be a loving thing to be and do? So just allow yourself to be who you are. Hold out for the right person. Don't compromise. It's dishonest to compromise. It's dishonest to get into relationships thinking that, oh, I better get into this relationship because someone better might not come along and I need to compromise because maybe this is the best I can do. Now imagine if the person you're with felt that about you. Wouldn't you be hurt if you thought that, that if you found out that the person you were with was only with you because they felt they didn't deserve anyone better or that they had to compromise? It's a horrible feeling. So don't do that to someone else. They deserve to have someone who loves them for who they are. They deserve to have someone who's not compromising by being with them and you deserve it too. You really deserve it. Those of us who always feel we need to work at being lovable, loved, we tend to be really hard on ourselves. We treat ourselves like doormats. We are our own best friend. We give and give of ourselves and we don't know how to receive. So I want to tell you, starting from today, learn to receive, receive love, receive the gifts from the universe. If someone loves you, just accept it. Don't feel you have to contort yourself to pay them back. They love you because of who you are. So thank you for listening. I'm going to ask my wonderful husband and soulmate. By the way, Danny and I have been married 22 years and I can't imagine being with anyone else. He's my soulmate. And I'm going to ask him if there's been any questions from anyone or are we having technical difficulties where the comments aren't showing up, which is often the case. I can see the comments on this phone. Yes. But on the second phone that I'm using, I can't even see this live stream. So I'm reading the comments as they rush past the bottom of the screen. I, and it's like, hello, and then there's from Steph, like zillions of hearts. And then yeah. from Neha, it's like, thank you so much. Uh, and then the screen's gone. And then there's like zillions of hearts and things all floating past the, <laughs> the screen. Earlier, somebody wrote, I apologize, I don't know their name, but they said they've lost so many people in their lives and they figure, okay, those weren't really their people. So I guess they agree exactly. with you completely. Those weren't, their, those weren't your people. And you know what I'd love is for you to show your face on the screen. I want, I want them to see you because I've been talking about you. So why don't you just put your face here and say hi to the audience? No, really? Yes, they the, would love to see you. The camera will fog over. No, they would love to see you. I'm sure the camera will fog over. Absolutely. And, Absolutely. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you guys can, can see me, but uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> so this is my wonderful husband and soulmate, Danny, who says he's lost his hair since being married to me. I can't imagine being with anyone else. Am I lying? I wouldn't be doing, I wouldn't be able to do what I do without him. And she'd once probably again, do it a lot better. You know, <laughs> she'd be able to get the comments actually really on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, <laughs> in fact, my normally my social media my social media wonder woman, Milena Joy Morris, is usually the one who reads out the comments. I will be back home in a couple of weeks and she'll probably be back doing the comments. And um, we do the best with what we have and, and Danny's amazing. And also because of all the things that I've learned recently and I know that I was brought up with all these values that didn't serve me, um, I have together with Angie DeMuro written a children's book because I don't want mm. other young people mm. to go through what I've gone through. So please check it out uh, with, uh, with my amazing co-author Angie DeMuro. We put together a book called Love, a story about who you truly are. We'll probably put the link somewhere in the, in the comments, but check it out. And I love you all. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, be who you are love who you are, you are worthy, deserving, you don't need to be someone else to be worthy of love. Be open and just be open to receiving. The universe has loads of gifts for, uh, for you, so please don't block them, open up to them and start receiving now. Love you all, Mwah. bye.